All right, functions, tables, and rate of change. This video is going to talk about how you take an input-output table and then graph the relationships between the inputs and outputs and how that's going to look when you put all those inputs and outputs on a uh, coordinate plane. And you should see some real cool things happen. So let's check it out. So our first equation is going to be y equals 2x. That means I'm going to take all of my inputs, my x values, and I'm going to multiply them by 2. So we're going to create the table. That's the first thing we're going to do. So if I have an input of 3, an x value of 3, it's going to look like this. y equals 2 times 3. And then what is that y going to be? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. So in my y column, I'm going to put a 6 here. For my next one, I've got 2 times negative 2. My input's negative 2. So 2 times negative 2, your y value is going to be negative 4. And then I'm going to put an input of 1. y equals 2 times 1. So my y column is going to read as 2 times 1 is 2. Next, we're going to have 2 times negative 4. So my y value will be negative 8. And then we have 2 times 0. So my y column, anything times 0 is 0. That's multiplicative property of 0 going on there. And then we stick in a 5 for the input. 2 times 5 is 10. So that's how we got this table filled in. Now what we're going to do is take these inputs and outputs and graph them over here on the coordinate plane. So our first ordered pair input of 3, output of 6, we're going to think of that as 3, 6. Now if you remember correctly, x values 3, y values 6. So 3, 6 is going to be right about there on the graph. Then we have negative 2, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 4 means left 2, down 4. It's going to be over in quadrant 3. 1, 2. 1, 2 is going to be in quadrant 1 and an x value of 1, y value of 2. A lot of times kids will think of it as 2, 1 and they'll think it goes right over here where my pointer is. But you got to be real careful. That x value is 1, y value is 2. There's, that's how it's going to line up. Negative 4, negative 8. That's going to be left 4, down 8. It's going to be over here. And then we have 0, 0 which is right on the origin. 5, 10. We're going to go right 5, up 10. And that's going to be way up there in quadrant 1. Okay, so you know you're doing this right if all of your graphed points fall along the same line. And in this case, they do. So that's cool. Everything's looking good. We're going to talk about one more thing be before we move on to another example. We need to understand how this line is showing a rate of change, otherwise known as a slope. A slope or a rate of change is defined as your vertical change over your horizontal change. Vertical meaning up, down. Horizontal meaning side to side. And if you look at these points, if you look at a point and then look at its next point to the right of it, if you look at this point and going to the right, there's, there's a series of movements you can do to go from one point to the next. If I look at this first point and look at it going to the next point on the right, from this point to this point I went up 4, right 2. And from this point to this point I went up 4, right 2. So I could say up 4, right 2. Now we've talked about this a little bit in class, but upward is a positive direction and right is a positive direction. So we could think of this as 4 over 2. Now, if you think of 4 over 2 in lower terms, you could think of it as 2 over 1, up 2, right 1. Now, if you look up here in this next point, up 2, right 1 fit for these two points. Also, you could go up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. All those moves, they all still fall along the line. We're able to land on some points that we didn't even graph from the table, but it all lines up. You could even go up 2, right 1 here, up 2, right 1. Up to right one, up to right one, up to right one. That is your rate of change in lowest terms. Now, if you think of this as a fraction, 2 over 1 is exactly the same thing as 2. If you look at this equation that we started out with, 
this shows the rate of change. This shows what the slope is going to be of the line. We're going to do a three more examples of this. Hopefully you're going to catch on. Moving on to the next one. So this next one shows that y equals negative 3x. So we're going to go ahead and start filling in our function table. And in this first one, we'd plug in for x, we'd plug in a 3. So negative 3 times 3 gives me a negative 9. Then I'm going to plug in a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives me a positive 6. Negative 3 times 1, that's our next input. 1 is our next input. That's going to work out to negative 3. My next input's negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives me 9. My input of 0, anything times 0 is 0. That's that multiplicative property of 0 going on. And then if I plug in a 2, negative 3 times 2 gives me negative 6. So we have our function table filled in. Let's see if we can graph all these points, and hopefully they're all going to line up along the same line. You know you're doing something right when all those points line up along the same line. My first ordered pair was 3, negative 9. That was my input and output. So I'm going to go over here. That's going to be right 3 down 9. That's going to be right about there. Negative 2, 6. Left 2, up 6. That's going to put you right here in quadrant 2. Now we have 1, negative 3. That's going to be right 1, down 3. Then you have negative 3, 9. That's left 3 and up 9. And then you have 0, 0. That's the origin. That's always going to be right where x and y meet. The x-axis and the y-axis meet. And then we have 2, negative 6, right 2, down 6. Look at this, the lines all line up. You know you're doing something right when that's the case. Now let's talk about figuring out the rate of change, otherwise known as the slope. So the rate of change is going to be your vertical change, your up, down, over your side to side change. Horizontal means side to side, which is the x-axis. So vertical change. Well, I'm going to look at this line from left to right. It's going downward to get from one point to the next. I'm going to look at these two points. I'm going to go ahead and look at this. I went down 6, right 2. Down 6, right 2. Downward, when dealing with vertical, would be considered negative. Right would be considered positive when consider considering the horizontal change. So I'm going down 6, right 2. Now, if you recognize this as a uh, fraction that can be in lower terms, I could divide both of these by 2. And I could think of this as down 3, right 1, negative 3 over 1. And then look at this. We've got, hey, down 3, right 1 here. That's All of these fall under the down 3, right 1. Now, negative 3 over 1 is the same thing as negative 3. So then that shows that our rate of change is a loss of 3 for every x value. And that's the line that shows it. Moving on. We have a fraction coefficient. Now some kids are going to want to go straight to their calculator and think of 1 half as 0.5 and then multiply that by the x values. Now you could do that. Now a lot of math teachers are going to tell you it's really important to understand that half of something is just dividing by 2. So I'm going to think of this as 1 half of 6. Hopefully you're going to realize that half of 6 is 3. And then the next one, half of negative 10. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. Once again, you could be typing in 0.5 times all these inputs, but a lot of math teachers are going to tell you it's really important to keep things considered with that fraction as a coefficient. When your inputs are all even, it's real easy to divide these things by 2. So half of 2 is 1. Half of negative 6 gives you negative 3. Half of 8 gives you 4. Half of negative 4 is going to give you negative 2. We're going to start graphing these ordered pairs. 6, 3. That's going to be right 6 up 3. Boom. And then we have negative 10, negative 5, left 10, down 5. That's going to be way over here. Here's 2, 1, right 2, up 1. Negative 6, negative 3, left 6, down 3. 
There it is. 8, 4 is going to be right 8 up 4. Negative 4, negative 2 is left 4 down 2. All those points line up. They're lining up along the same straight line. Now let's talk about the rate of change for this slope. You're going to look at a point and then see what it go, how, what moves you have to make to get to the next point on the line. So we have vertical change over horizontal change. From this point to the point on the right, I went up 3, up 3, and right 6. Up 3, right 6. Now upward is a positive direction, right is a positive direction. So that's going to be thought of as 3 over 6. Now 3, 6, hopefully you realize, can be in lower terms, and it would be 1 half. So you could go up one right two to go to a different point, and then just be aware, up one right two, it even works in here, look at this, up one right two, up one right two, up one right two, it still gets you from this point to the next. So these are both the same kind of rate of change, this is in lowest terms, so one half was your rate of change, and once again, one half was the coefficient, that thing you're multiplying by x. Your coefficient of x, is always going to show what the rate of change is. We're going to move on to one more example. Negative one-third of x. y equals negative one-third of x. Now some kids might want to go straight to their calculator and think of this as, oh, that's going to be negative 0.3 repeating x. This is where a lot of teachers are really going to recommend, especially with a problem like this. If you do this 0.3 repeating, you're going to get some unusual numbers. What the teachers would recommend is you keep it in fraction form. Negative one-third of six for this first one. A third of six is going to be two. And then I see a negative times a positive, so it's going to be a negative answer. It's going to be negative two. We've got a third, negative a third of negative nine. You could think negative times negative makes positive, and then a third of nine is going to be three. Negative a third of three. Well, negative times positive makes your next one negative, and then a third of three is one. Our next one is going to be negative one third of negative six. This is where, if you're not understanding how this fraction thing works, this is where you want to sit down with your teacher sometime and talk about how that can work. Um, negative times negative makes a positive, and then a third of six is going to be two, so it's going to be positive two. Negative a third of nine is going to be, your answer is going to be negative, because I see negative times positive, and then a third of nine is three, so it's negative three. And then we've got an input of zero. Negative a third of nothing is still nothing. Anything times zero, zero, that's that, uh, multiplicative property of zero. Now we're going to graph them. 6, negative 2, right 6 down 2. Negative 9, 3, left 9 up 3 is going to put you over here. 3, negative 1, right 3 down 1, right 3 down 1. Negative 6, 2 is left 6 up 2. 9, negative 3 is going to be right 9 down 3. 0, 0 is going to be right on the origin. All these points are lining up. We did do it right. Now let's talk about the rate of change. Vertical change over horizontal change. From this point to this point, you could take any pair of points that you want, but you always want to start with one on the left. How are you getting to the next one on the right? Well, from here to here, I went down two and then right six. I went down two, right six, downward, is a negative direction. So you could think of this as negative two and then right six would be positive six because right is always on the x-axis going right as a positive direction. Now we could have looked at another one or you can just get this in lower terms. Two over six is one third and then just bring the negative over. Down one, right three. Here I went down one, right three. There's a lot of different places I could go down one, right three. Down one, right three, down one, right three. And you're gonna always line up a up with a point on the line. And once again, you'll notice negative one third was your rate of change. And there is that coefficient of x, negative one third down here, negative one third up here. That shows the rate of change. 
I hope this helps. Best of luck to you. If you're still having trouble with this, sit down and talk to your teacher about it.